nice, nice evening. Yeah. Welcome back. What's happening? So eight weeks out today from the first show. Um, today we are actually. I'm actually in Liverpool at the moment, so I had to come down this morning uh, to dental extents, obviously just to kind of get a checkup on my teeth. Um, so busy enough day. Then I'm going back to Ultraflex um, to do a shoot. Um, and then I have a good bit of work to box off later in the day as well. It's a rest day today, so looking forward to getting back and, and doing the shoot as well. It was, obviously, it's a shoot that Meg and Cuba have organised for their coaching team. So, um, yeah, we go in and we get some, we get some shots done um, and see how we look. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go through three things in this video, which I think will make your contest prep easier. And um, things that have definitely, definitely made this contest prep a lot easier for me as well. So also throw into this video as well, I actually trained legs yesterday, and I'm actually gonna throw that session into this video as well, and go through basically a voiceover of me running through that session, which is something different. So yeah, let's crack on with the day. Stay tuned, I'll go through them a few bits, and let's see what happens. So pit stop. On the way back from Liverpool, we have meal two on the side of the road <laughs> in the moors. It's nice up here. But uh, yeah, meal two going down. I will always bring, I have this, I have another meal on the back as well. Um, I don't need the other meal, but I always bring the next meal anyway, just in case of emergency. So, um, car breaking down, flat tire, we've all been there before. So just in case I'm delayed, I always have that extra one as well. But meal two. Yeah. Okay, so we've actually found some sheep. Can we see them? Look at them. This day just gets better. Isn't it? Look at them lads. Okay, so I'm gonna head down to the gym in a bit. I'm going to actually run through some posing rounds as well um, because of the rest day. So I'll actually try and film some of it. So yeah, going through the first tip to make your contest prep easier. It's to give yourself enough time. And what I mean by that, is if you're looking at a 12 week prep, a 16 week prep, realistically, it's probably not gonna be long enough to get you to the position that you wanna be in. I think we all underestimate how much body fat we have to pull off. Depends on how much body fat you have, look at doing a slightly longer prep. First prep, like 20 to 24 weeks. That way, you can actually pull a good chunk of body fat off in the first half of that prep. And then as the second half comes in, you can slow that rate of loss down a little bit. And it's gonna be, your body's gonna thank you for that in the latter stages of prep when it is pretty smashed as well. That there is, you never know what's gonna arise during prep. What obstacles may arise, life happens, illness happens, you don't know what's gonna happen. So if you have an extra bit of time, it's just gonna mean that you're ahead of the game and nothing really throws you off track in comparison to if you only have a set amount that you can't waste any weeks basically. Number one, it's gonna be easier mentally because you know you're gonna be ahead rather than chasing your tail. And number two, it's going to actually ensure that you have enough time to really get yourself fat free. Okay, so here's a little bit of posing from today. So quarter turn here, um, I think which will be a pretty good shot when I'm a bit leaner. Front, that's gonna be one of my strongest, I think. Um, I think from the front, I'm, I'm coming in now, but as you can see, from the side, it's not bad. A bit more detail starting to come through the legs here. And the glutes from the side still need to come in a lot, lot more as well. And there's still a lot more to come off my waist too. But um, as you can see, it's starting to come in. Things are just starting to get a little bit harder now at the moment. But there is where you will really see where I'm holding it most. So glutes are still pretty fat, to be honest with you. Lower back. Lower back is decent, but kind of around the hips and around the glutes, that's where it's really, really holding the most at the moment. So, you know, it will it will come in. You know, it will be ready. But right now, that's just kind of being the stubborn part that needs to get moving. Welcome back to the channel guys. Something a little bit different today. I'm gonna to take you through a leg session at just over eight weeks out, but I'm gonna do a voiceover of how the session went and basically talking you through it. So first up, we get straight in. We had a doctor first up, okay? So as you will see in this adductor, what I'm thinking here, I'm not just thinking about letting the weight come out. I'm actually thinking about dragging this weight out like with my adductors, really controlling that. I really wanna be safe in this as well because it's a very, very easy movement to lift too heavy and then very easy to get like an adductor like pop um, or a little tear. Very, very easy to happen. So I'm just trying to be really careful here, as you will see. Um, very, very focused, just trying to open 
when I get to that position, I know where my range of motion is. I try and open more every time, um, but that literally is me opening fully. Um, unfortunately, my range of motion here isn't great. Um, but then when I am pulling, what I'm trying to do is I'm not trying to just like drive that weight in like with everything I have. I'm actually just trying to pull it in like with my actual adductor. So trying to contract there. And I'm trying to keep my chest tall and I pull my arse down into the seat as well. I feel like that really, really kind of keeps me stable too. So um, yeah, pretty straightforward with this. Um, we have the seated leg curl next. So you will see with the seated leg curl, I push that pad down onto my quads like pretty tight because I want myself proper locked in here. So like it, it nearly creates stability for me through that machine. So you will see then I, I push against that pad um, I keep my chin tucked and my lower back kind of against that back pad as well, just as kind of a bracing point and being able to stay really, really locked in. You'll see that during this, like nothing moves apart from literally me contracting my hamstrings. You know, and you will see during the sets that that is the goal during all of them, you know, to really break down the tissue that I'm actually trying to utilize. So you will see here what I'm doing when I get to the top, I'm having a slight pause. And then instead of like just kicking it down, I'm actually thinking of like actively contracting and like being aggressive with it, like pulling it down hard, but making sure it is the hamstrings actually pulling it down as well. Um, I don't really pause at the bottom, like a slight pause and then a real kind of, you know, well-controlled eccentric as well. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it there. Now, this is actually a deload session too. So all these sets in this are actually only one set per exercise. Um, the intensity is still the same, but... Um, just obviously less volume in this session, but we're back to normal from Sunday session, which I'm excited for. SLDLs up next. So you will see, I like to get myself set up here. Feet kind of like just inside shoulder with the part for me. Obviously get myself strapped in. Now from here, you will see that I drive my hips back and up, get my back neutral and then drive. So when I'm going through these, right, what I'm thinking, I always keep my chin tucked. All I'm thinking about is what, I'm, what I can feel, not about what I can see in the mirror in front of me. So I literally think about driving them hips back as much as I possibly can. I almost think about driving them like back and up as well. Because my goal here is I want to try and like literally tear them hamstrings, not tear the hamstrings, but you know what I'm trying to say. I want to feel them like breaking down and tearing. So I drive them hips back as much as I possibly can. You will see when I get to the floor, I'm not just banging the weight and just dropping it. You will see that I'm actually like placing it down slowly and to keep tension on right through every single rep, basically. So, um, yeah, strength is holding pretty good on this movement as well. It's not a strong point of mine, so pretty happy with how this is running. Line hamstring curl. So, believe it or not, I was actually, I'm actually like very, very lopsided. So you will see here, I'm actually not like straight down the middle. It's it's a lot, lot better than I was before as well. But you will see I'm a bit off to the, to the right a little bit. Um, but it is what it is. I know I'm broken. Look. <laughs> um, but these feel really, really good. So again, coming into the stretch, a slight little pause, keeping tension on, and then thinking about actually contracting hamstrings. Hamstrings for me were definitely a, a hard body part to actually grow. And... I've had to really kind of take ego out of this completely and really just think about actually using the muscle. I'm actually just looking back over in this video again. That is so bad. Like that is literally me like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's really bad. But it actually feels completely normal for me during the set. Like it doesn't feel off. My body is actually just completely lopsided. Um, I get work done and I've seen chiropractic and stuff for this as well and it's actually better than what I was. So yeah, uh, you can slag me all you want for this. Now, Leg press. So again, I know it's hamstring bias session today, as you can probably see from the start of the session, but then we have a couple of quad movements to finish off. So this is really kind of quad biased if you use a side like squat press before. And as you will see, like I get a lot of knee flexion here. You will see, and my calves like literally come down nearly into my hamstrings too. So the depth here is pretty good. Now, looking at this, what I'm thinking during this as well, I have pretty dodgy knees, okay? So I can't just load this up and just go hell for leather and just go through because number one, I end up getting out and my knees will be the only thing that hurts. And number two, I don't really feel anything happening. I actually don't get anything from my quads to catch it. So this is why I, I'm very, very slow and controlled with these. It's not that like, you know, I'm doing it on purpose, but I have to, it's just the way I have to move in squat and patterns to be able to actually connect with my quads rather than my knees just taking over. And um, so that's why it's kind of super slow. Obviously, in the hole, I like to have a little bit of a pause too. And from that bottom position, what I'm trying to do here is I'm actually trying to like 
contract my quads from the bottom. So rather than just like bouncing that up here, I could probably get like three or four more reps if I was just bouncing this. But I'm actually trying to like, be like how much damage can I do to my quads in this? You know, so from the bottom here, you will see quads, 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 and then contract. And there, you can see I stick. And like, it's very easy to bounce up and down out of this. But again, for me, I have to be conscious of these little things like my knees. And I just, like, I used to lift loads and loads but I used to not get any growth from it. So when still, when that happens, like you have to look internally then and be like, right, something's not right here. You know, if my muscularity doesn't match the load that I'm lifting. So leg extensions. Um, you will see, I actually strap in here. So I actually put the straps around the handles and basically this is to keep myself pulled in. So I want to like pull my arms right down into that seat. And what this does is if you, if you take your hands off the handles, when you pull, you'll actually, your hips will actually want to shoot up first as well. So this is just causing me to kind of pull my hips down and actually then pull through the whole quad. So what I think of here is I actually start, I actually think about starting the pull like from up near the hip, the top of the quad, like near the rec fem. That's where I don't, so I don't pull from the knee. I actually pull from up at the top of the quad near the rec fem. Um, and then as I contract, like the whole, it comes down the whole quad as well. But that's what I think of during this. Um, again, when I'm doing this, when I stop here in the stretch, I actually don't take tension off. So that tension is actually still on in the bottom position here. Um, it's hard. And then I drag, 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 contract, and then control again. So every rep, every stretch, every contraction, my quads are on at all times here. Um, and that's the last rep. If this wasn't the, the volume, to be honest, I probably would have taken like one more rep there, maybe with a spot, but there was there was, there was no need um, in this one at all. Um, now, the boring stuff, calf raises. To be honest, my calves are shit. I should be doing these at the start of a session. Um, so yeah, me hold myself accountable what I should be um, to actually give them more focus, give them more attention, have more energy available for them at the start. Hence why they're, they're probably so bad. So something I definitely have to have to um, do myself. But you will see with them, I have got a lot better with them. They have actually grown, to be fair. Just just not much. <laughs> um, I think it's because I'm tall as well. Obviously, I have long legs, so it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, but it's no excuse. It, it is no excuse. Um, so you will see, as I come down into the stretch, the tension is still on in the stretch. I pause, and then when I drive, I don't just, like, bounce up. Again, I think about contracting through the, through the calves. You know, so, like, these hurt. These should really, really hurt. Like, a lot of people can move a lot of weight on calves, but, like, you know, are they just bouncing? Are they using, like, you know, Achilles and everything as well, like stretch reflex? Possibly. Now, tip number two for making your contest prep easier. I think it's a big one that many people probably won't even think of, but I think it makes a big, big difference. It's keeping yourself busy, keeping your mind busy, keeping your body, body active, basically, because the more to idle time you have during a contest prep, whether that be kind of sitting around or just literally doing nothing, but eating, thinking about the show, sleeping, it, it gets very overwhelming. Whereas like personally for me, for example, this prep, you know, work is busy. Work is very busy at the moment. So I, I do not have time during the day to think about meals. If anything, you know, if I, you know, didn't have alarm set for meals, you know, I'd probably forget them sometimes. So being busy, having goals, you know, outside of competing as well in terms of like, you know, whether that be work related or different kind of goals elsewhere, I think it really keeps your mind focused and kind of shifts it away from just food focus and counting down the clock until your next meal. So the third and final tip for an easier contest prep is having a good start position for that prep. So that this comes back to the off season, you know, so we're not even looking at contest prep here. We're actually looking at how well the off season has went to put you in a position to actually start that prep. So in the off season, make sure you are training extremely hard and driving that training forward. So your body actually requires the amount of food it needs to grow, but so that you can also build that food up to a point that when a diet and phase comes around, you're starting in a good position. You know, you have the food high, you're able to support that performance. So if the food starts in a high position, if your cardio is low, if your composition is still, you know, not holding the crazy amount of body fat, it means that as the prep goes on, you're going to you're going to have a large chunk of calories to play with and pull away from as you go. And if you can manage that, it means that you're still going to have a lot of fuel there to support that training. Because if you start that prep in a bad position, holding a lot of body fat, fuel not really high, training subpar, it means that 
you're going to have to do you know probably a lot of cardio you're going to have to have to get down to low fuel pretty fast and that's only going to have a knock-on effect to your training which means that potentially you're going to end up losing muscle during that prep as well and probably end up just looking small on stage and maybe not in the position you even want from a condition standpoint because of that poor starting position so number one the duration of your prep number two keeping yourself busy and number three your starting position for that prep that is me finished and um, i hope you enjoyed that vlog at eight weeks out obviously something a little different in there with the voiceover training as well so let me know what you thought of that if you thought it was beneficial fantastic it's something i actually might do again or if you thought it was pretty shit let me know and i won't do it again for sure but um thank you very much for watching as usual i really appreciate it eight weeks out things are coming in close now so yeah it's time to put a foot on the gas so thank you very much for watching guys i appreciate it again like share comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next one